We're in the basement of Jake's house, in a brand new basement of Jake's house, and we're talking about extra nerdy details having to do with insulation and thermal decoupling. So let's take it away. We're in the basement of the Jake's house and we're surrounded by concrete. And in previous videos, we spent a lot of time talking about how we thermally isolate the basement from the inside of the house. And unfortunately, light wells, which are required to be put into basements to allow people in any living space to get out of the basement in case there's a fire in the house, kind of short circuit our insulation details. And so what we have in this space right here, which is a light well, and eventually when the house is entirely built, this light well will be outside, which means it will be exposed to the extremes of heat of hot in the summertime and cold in the wintertime. And what we noticed is that it completely bypasses the insulation that's on the outside of the foundation. And when we go over here and look at this, we actually have concrete that's going to be exposed to the environment and will have a direct pathway into the house if we don't do something about it. So Craig, tell us a little bit about what we're planning on doing in this area and what we had to do engineering wise in order to implement this, this uh, fix because really this fix is a pretty new fix and I've never seen it in another project before but it really is going to affect the house a lot. So in the move for energy coming from outside in cold to hot or hot to cool, you have an opportunity for condensation. So we're always looking at that in passive house, how do we decouple those situations? So here, since we're in the exterior, even though we're interior of all the insulation, this is where natural light is being brought into the basement that gives the people an opportunity to egress and mm -hmm. escape from this bedroom or have a really nice space to sit in the playroom. So when this surface here, which is the part of the mat slab that's exposed to the environment, heat and energy can transfer into our slab sideways here. We have insulation below the mat slab, but not on the side yet in this space. So what we intend to do is to add a very dynamic decoupling insulation that's quite rigid, but quite, uh, it's dense, but it's a high, high R value. And we'll add that to the surface before we start backfilling with the material that it's in here for the ability to resist being crushed. Uh, it has durability, can be exposed to the area, light, UV, temperatures. And we won't get that bridging that can occur from cooler material, hotter material into the building itself. So, so our entire house is surrounded by insulation and that's to avoid this kind of thermal bypass that happens with low R value materials. So we know from our, our work that our, I mean, the concrete itself has an R value of about 0.1 per inch. So it's about one tenth as insulative as wood and about one thirtieth as insulative as a lot of the foam insulations. So it's really a way for heat to go in and out of a house really quickly. Very rapidly. And what we have here is if, if this wasn't insulated right here, we would literally have heat going right up here, go past the window and door or he, that's gonna be here, and then it would literally freeze or chill that wood right in here or this concrete right in here. And there's nothing to stop it. Like there's literally no insulation. So yeah. we're, we're potentially gonna get condensation issues and certainly we're gonna have cold floors in the wintertime and hot floors in the summertime in that. As you're standing adjacent to the window. So yeah, your temperature wouldn't be evenly dynamic on right. the floor here. So, so what we know um, about this space right now, that even though we're standing in what is outside, this is actually the footing for this concrete wall, right? So this piece of concrete right here is actually helping hold up this big concrete wall when the earth starts pushing against it, right? Yeah. And so structurally, we had to break up this concrete here from the mat slab concrete. Who helped us do that? So our structural engineers designed the toe that comes into the mat slab. Okay. So that slab is exceptionally thick because we don't have footings going down and that holds the walls with a, with a tensile strength. Okay. So that we, when we start to backfill that toe is strong, but because this slab is separate from those. So this slab right here that we're sitting on is literally 
disconnected from these two slabs right here. Yes, the small slab here is independent of the of the major mat slab. So what it Same looks thickness. like, it looks like right here, it's it is connected, but this is actually just foam. Yeah. So there's there's zero there's zero structural effect of that foam. It's literally just there to hold the insulation to stop heat from going in this slab into this slab. Correct. It breaks the bridging. And then we're carrying our exterior rigid insulation that we have on all of our walls. Those walls, like this is going to be surrounded by walls. This is going to be the outside of the house. This is going to be the inside of the house. That's, that insulation also goes all the way down here and comes all the way down and covers this face as well. Right. So these walls that are built on these stem walls will continue all the way down with insulation. So that's, that's fascinating. So I've never seen that detail before. Why don't we have to protect this wall from the insulation? Because we're not putting any, any insulation on this, but this is actually the inside of the house, right? Right, so it, on the interior, we're not leaving these walls exposed. We actually have insulated walls that are uh, set away from this with an, an air gap. So there's, there's no bridging through that air, oh. air gap into this surface wall. So this is literally, this concrete is actually not in the insulated space of the house. It is, this is actually a wall, another wood frame wall that's insulated right here. That's kind of separating this space from the rest of the house. Correct. That's it's fascinating. So really what we've done is we've tried to take all the advantages of the structural concrete and get rid of all the disadvantages. So obviously, we're living in this or sitting in this 3,600 square foot basement and we have this nice strong concrete wall, but it's not very insulative. And so we're taking some small amount of additional material and we're really paying attention to all the little details to make sure that when we build this house, there's not gonna be any cold spots in the winter time and not any hot spots in the summertime. Right, the similar, uh, similar method that we did from the outside in this is outside, so we have to stop this outside from transferring inward as well. And, and you were saying earlier that the foam that we have in here right now, this is actually a special foam that resists the force of this toe pushing against the rest of this concrete. Yes, it's quite dense. And who specified that? That we actually researched and told the structural engineers about it because it's a different methodology. It's uh, become quite common in Europe to decouple uh, decks on buildings so that your deck isn't bridging energy into the building. So yes. you, you, you create these thermal breaks with a high dense density polymer. Okay. And that's what we're using here. So we really just stole the idea from the European uh, buildings that are the concrete slab floors and they have those concrete cantilevered balconies out there and they thermally decouple that so that you don't have the heat running into the house. Yeah, because that's where you look on a ceiling of an old, old building that wasn't decoupled you'll have mold coming in on the ceiling and down the wall as well, because that's, that's where you get those bridges. Hot interior vapor filled air hitting the cold exterior bridge. It'll condensate, then it'll create a wet spot in your building and you'll get molds. That's fascinating. So again, details like this matter. And when we're building a house like this, and this house is going to be a forever house for this client and will be around for literally generations, we need to make sure that we're paying attention to the details so that that house stays comfortable and energy efficient, mold free <laughs> and super quiet because again, we're right next to a railroad. And so if you're interested in following more about this project or our other projects or learning more about building science, hit subscribe as we show you how to build a better way.